The p-value is often misinterpreted. Uh, this may be related to the fact that there are two different approaches to interpreting the p-value. Whether these two approaches are complementary or somewhat contradictory is uh, controversial. So let me present these two approaches. The first approach uh, we'll call the Fisher approach. And in this method, uh, it's based upon the uh, derivation of the p-value as the probability of the data, or data more extreme, assuming the null hypothesis is true. This implies that smaller and smaller p-values provide stronger and stronger evidence against the null hypothesis. Uh, one of the problems with this definition, especially for students and for uh, non-statisticians, is that we have to ask, what is a small p-value? In other words, what is strong evidence against a null hypothesis? Well, the very basis of this method is that you should view the p-value as a continuum. But with this said, here are some uh, rules of thumb that uh, students often appreciate in sort of defining ranges and some language to use in uh, looking at p-values. So um, I'll just let you look at this for a moment. And I present this in very uh, several other contexts. But basically, um, p-value is less than 0 0.10, and, but more than 0 0.05. Uh, we say there's marginally significant and if it's a null hypothesis. And at the other end, at the lower extreme, p-value is less than 0 0.01, uh, are said to have margin, uh, highly significant evidence against a null hypothesis. Um, these sort of thresholds are, are not firm, uh, are not firm cutoff points, but uh, and should be taken with a grain of salt. Okay, the other method um, that uh, is used, we'll call the Neyman Pearson interpretation. And with this method, it's based upon uh, the type 1 error rate. And type 1 error rate is defined, a uh, type 1 error is defined as an erroneous rejection of the null hypothesis. Now, uh, alpha is the acceptable type 1 error rate. So the procedure we use is to set alpha before collecting data. Uh, then after collecting the data and calculating the p-value, we will reject the null hypothesis when the p-value is less than alpha. Otherwise, we retain the null hypothesis. So for example, suppose uh, we do an analysis to arrive at a p-value of 0 0.089. The flexible Fisher approach um, would say that, well, data or data more extreme would occur 8.9% uh, of the time if the null hypothesis were true. And adopting the language that I presented in the earlier slide, we'd say this is marginally significant evidence against the null hypothesis. In contrast, the uh, fixed Neyman-Pearson approach uh, would uh, be if we had set an alpha threshold of 0 0.10, uh, since the p-value is less than that, we would be compelled to reject the null hypothesis. On the other hand, if we had set an alpha threshold of 0 0.05, uh, we would be compelled to retain the null hypothesis. Notice that we don't accept the null hypothesis. We merely retain it, saying that we don't have enough evidence to reject it. OK, in conclusion, uh, there are two different ways to interpret p-values. Whether these two ways are uh, consistent with each other or somewhat contradictory is debatable. Uh, for more information on this topic, see the article by Lehman, which appeared in the Journal of the American uh, Statistical Association 1993, as cited on this slide. Thank you very much for your attention.